Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Wednesday, April the 4th, 2018. I'm going to make this one really quick. Basically, what you're seeing here is an acceleration point in the Bitcoin futures. So I wanted to show you this weekly chart as the 5880 is in play. I've told you it was in play ever since uh, the first uh, sell-off right here was indicated. Uh, this is now going into the third week. And prices are accelerating, pointing downward. Market does not seem quite uh, ready to hit a bottom yet. And we don't know where that bottom is going to be. And the market is doing what it's going to do. Taking a look at the Dow futures. All right. The Dow was able to recover uh, from an earlier sell-off. The market keeps playing with the long-term trend line support. This is a pointer. And now, so far, uh, we are developing another pointer here. So this is becoming rather interesting is where we go from here. We also have accelerating momentum starting to point further down. I'm, be, I'm beginning to believe that every rally is going to be sold in the near term because we are entered into that uh, first pulse wave bear market. All right. The first wave can be a little tricky. Markets can consolidate a little bit within the first wave. But then eventually the first wave accelerates, turning into a two wave secondary pulse wave and those tend to be a lot more powerful and depending on how powerful the market gets then it turns into that third wave the third wave is the most powerful pulse wave all right that's when the markets are locked in and going parabolic right now we're at a stage one bear market ending of a uh, bull market all right it's official especially if we were to close let's say today was friday this is what that would be this would be the beginning the first official bona fide bar of the new bear market so this is really interesting see if this uh rally can continue and change the complexion of the chart if it doesn't this is a bona fide beginning bar of a bear market, an official bear market, first wave. All right. The reason why is because when the consolidate, when the market starts to um, retrace, and that retracement becomes severe enough, it, it 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 ends the trend altogether, and you lose momentum. And that's what's happening here, folks. It's been a long ride. The market's done nothing but go straight up with no real corrections in sight. You you don't see any real correction whatsoever. All right, you thought you was going to get one back in here, but it didn't manifest. And that's it. All right, so bull market had a false start up in here. Bear market continued. Then it finally bottomed out. And then rally. And then from that point, market continued and never looked back. Look at that. Never looked back. So, do you want to know where the market's going to go once the bear market really gets kicked off here? I can answer that question for you. The answer is somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000. It may even accelerate past that and get to 13,000. That's right. A possible 10,000 point drop from where we are now. That's how severe the bear could get. It just depends. You do got mad rampage coming up here that could save the day. But if that momentum is not behind it, then we get an inverse relationship to the rampage meaning where there's a cascading of order types. What happens is these orders up here are liquidated, they're canceled, and then they pile on. You get the pile on effect where 
sale orders to start kicking in all over the place and everybody's running for cover. Taking a look here at the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ 100, not quite as severe as the Dow. It would take another week or so, possible two bars, but let's go back on the NASDAQ. Straight up, the market is gone on the weekly chart. No real correction in sight. None, nada. And what do we got here? We got this low of 3,800, right? That was on uh, February, the, the week of February the 8th of 2016. All right. So where is the NASDAQ going to end up going? You guessed it. It's going back to 3,800. It needs to take out that pointer on a correction. That's where we're going. All right. If this manifests into a, a real bear market, that's where the market will correct to. All right. And exceed. Take out. Give or take a few hundred points. But just like the Dow, you got mad rampage coming up. If the market fails and the momentum doesn't get behind it, you got that cascading effect and the pylon effect, taking it, taking it below the Kumo cloud. We'll see what happens. Interesting crossroads we are at. Market can still turn from here, but if, it, if that momentum crosses down below that trend line, that's, that's, that's a wrap. Hasn't happened yet, so we will see. All right, let's take a look now at the crude oil real quick. All right, crude oil's maintaining. It's trying to. Needs to close above $63.45 this week to keep the bullish momentum in place. Very to do so would open up downside risk where the market could fall to as low as $61. All right, let's take a look now at the bonds. Bonds had a nice technical bounce, got up to the trend line here, that 147 mark, and quickly retreated. Here we were, our back end of 145. Back in the 145 handle. Market needs to maintain a close this week above 145.06 to keep bullish momentum in place and have another opportunity next week to push through this resistance and make a run back up to 150. A ferry to do so opens up uh, a huge selling portal, which could take the market back down to 142 and below. So this one is also at a crossroads. Will the rally be sold for the next leg down, which could be down to the 141, 140 handle easily? All right, let's take a look now at natural gas. All right, as you can see here, nat gas still struggling. A close above $2.69 this week could open up the door for a run back up to the $2.80, maybe even $3 handle, which is the long-term trend line resistance here, and putting this toward the air pocket, the bottom of the Kumo cloud, and the uh, longer term trend line resistance area. So this one still very bearish. Taking a look at the US dollar. All right, US dollar right now, still maintaining that Trump White House policy of 89 to 91 range. Market still staying afloat. Taking a look now at gold, gold caught a bid earlier and then retreat it here on the weekly chart need to close above $1,335.50 in order to keep the bullish momentum door swung open. Going to look at silver. All right, both gold and silver still very much in the sideways consolidation, but silver is gaining some downward pressure here, building on that bearish momentum trying to fall off of a cliff this is definitely one to watch i thought we had some promise coming up but nope market has lost all momentum needs to close above 16 dollars and 48 cents if it's going to gain it back if not then that's where we are all right let's see taking a look at hack all 
right. Let's see here. All right, so hat still strong, trying to get back above 35. If it closes above $34.51, it opens up the door to take out that 36 within the next week or so. So this one's definitely showing signs of being in play on the long side as the bull market is starting to show signs of developing, really developing. All right, someone chewed me out for not covering BTCS. And really, you know, yeah, I know about the, the little pot we had, but I'm still, this one is a longer term play. It's a penny stock. What are you going to do with a penny stock? You don't put stops in on a penny stock. You just hold it. You hold it and you wait for something big to happen so you can take some profit and make some money. And if it's a, if it gets a real story behind it, a penny stock will become a dollar stock and then a $5 stock and then a $10 stock and then a $100 stock and then you know. So this is just one of those ones where we're just waiting to see what's going to happen. Nothing's happening right now. It broke the longer term nine cent support, got down here to four cents and now it's bounced from there to six cents and Right now, unfortunately, uh, it's in the bear market. It's below the Kumo cloud. And we have no idea where the bottom is going to be. Hopefully, momentum will pick up and we'll get back above 30 cents sometime in the near future. But this is just one of those you just you buy something, put it in your back pocket, and you wait for something happens. It's just one of those things. And the BTSC is no different. Same thing. Same exact thing. No difference. All right. Looking at GBTC, that Bitcoin group, and you can see same thing. Same things are happening in the Bitcoin space. What you know? What can I tell you? It's just one of those things. Like I say, you buy it and forget about it. Penny stock. What are you going to do? GBTC is not a penny stock, so unfortunately, you got to watch that one. You got to trade that one. But I do think it could get back up to the twenty twenty four dollar handle. Maybe back above, maybe take out the 38 high and get to 40. I, I still think 40 is in play. Mad rampage coming up here, too. I'm really hoping that as long as the market stays north side of this Kumo cloud, that this will be one to get us there. So this is one that's definitely on the watch list. If, if it can surprise us and close above $13.43, that'll put it, put it in a short-term bottom, and then we can see the market possibly rock and roll. But the Bitcoin futures is really weighing on the space right now. So it's one of those things you just got to watch, wait and see and just trade, trade what you see. And with that being said, remember PulseWayTrading.com. Learn how to trade these markets. Build a, a uh, secondary income stream for you and your family. Don't get caught out there in the wild. Put the artificial intelligence algorithms on your side. And that's PulseWaveTrading.com. We got the free trial going on right now. And with your uh, subscription to the weekly Pulse Wave price triggers, you do get the, the study course for free, along with a bunch of other uh, resources and study kits. So you can learn how to read these algorithms and put the power of the algos on your side. And remember, with that being said, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Peace.